In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a simple REST API using Next.js and also set up authentication and authorization using JSON Web Token with help of Alt Zero. So we are going to be taking this step by step and it's also going to be a basic tutorial. We are going to follow the steps I've provided right here in my website. All the commands and all the code snippets you need for this tutorial is right here. So if you are learning Nest.js, this is the tutorial for you. We are going to create this simple API with few endpoints. We are going to protect these endpoints by using authorization guards. And we are going to require JSON Web Token to be provided to be able to assess one of the routes. So let's go ahead to get started. If you like nuggets like this, please consider uh, subscribing to my channel. So click on that subscribe button to subscribe so that you don't miss any updates. And also if this is informative, uh, please like the video and leave me a comment if you have any challenges whatsoever. So let's go ahead to get started. The prerequisite is that you need an IDE, either VS Code or maybe IntelliJ or any other IDE. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to install next CLI. So I'm going to open terminal. So I'm going to open a new terminal and we are going to run the commands to install next.js CLI at next.js slash CLI. And that is the first step. All right, so let's go ahead to create a new next application. So I'm going to create a next application, next new and specify the name of the application. Let's call this next.js tutorial. Yes, npm. Okay, so it completes. Let's go ahead to cd into this directory and let's try to start the server and let's see what we have. So I'm going to cd into this directory and run the command npm run start. It should start at port 3000. And let's go ahead to check what we have at port 3000 HTTP localhost port 3000. And we have a hello world. So where is this coming from? So the next thing we want to, the next thing we want to do is to open this application in VS Code so that we can see actually what files were generated. So I'm going to open and I'm going to choose Next.js tutorial, which is what we just created right now. So you can see inside the SRC folder we have an app controller. So you can see the hello world controller method and the service contains the actual method. So let's add two more functions to return different um, strings. One of them will be a protected route and the second one will be a public one. Let me use get public and this is going to return a public um, resource. So let's do the same thing and create a private resource as well. So I'm going to copy this and just paste it and rename this to private. So we have the methods created in the service. So this is private, sorry. And we are going to do the same in the controller. We are going to do this. Let's just copy this and just change the name. I'm going to paste it and this is going to be get public. And it's going to call the get public from app service. And I'm simply going to copy this and paste it as well and change the name. Okay, so let's save everything and let's just make sure everything is working well up to this point. So I'm going to go to slash public. So you can see slash public returns nothing. Okay, yeah, our server is not started. So let me go ahead to start my server. npm run starts. Okay, so slash public. I hit the enter key, let's see. Oh, sorry, we have to specify the routes. So this is going to be slash public and this is going to be slash private. Okay, so we have the public um, endpoint. We can see it returns welcome guests. So if I go to the private one, it says welcome member. Okay, so we've created the API. Let's now go ahead to see how we can actually protect this private uh, endpoint. So I'm going back to my application. So the first thing we want to do is to create the authorization module and the authorization guard. This is what is going to take the incoming request and then check it for valid JWT. I'm going to the terminal, I'm going to play my terminal and I'm going to create a new module and also a new guard. So I'm going to say next, next generate module authorization. I'm not going to allow it to generate the spec file because the spec files, because we are not going to be doing any testing. And we're also going to generate the guard as well. 
So you can also look at the steps in my website. You can copy them from there, the commands, if you want. Okay, so you can see that it created the authorization directory. Inside it, you see the guard, and inside it, you see the module, okay? We need two dependencies. One of them is the JWK source, uh, JWKS-RSA, and also the Express JWT. These are needed to manage JSON web tokens. Okay, so we have all the dependencies installed. Now we are going to the authorization guard. The authorization guard contains a function that returns true or false depending on if you have a valid token, a valid JWT, and returns true and allows you. If it returns false, it means you are not authorized. So we are going to write a function that checks the JWT and returns the correct or the appropriate response. So let's call this function check JWT, check JWT and it's going to be it's going to be an async uh, return is going to return a promise so we are going to use the promiseify method it's going to take an express JWT an express JWT is going to take an object which contains all the necessary parameters so the first one we have to specify certain uh, fields the first field or the first entry is going to be the secret and the secret is going to be coming from express jwt secret and it's also going to require a number of fields the first one is to be is, is cache whether it's going to be, the key is going to be cached true and we're also going to decide whether we are going to rate limit the request coming in generally it's always good to set it to true then we also need to set the request per minute um, let's just use five. So we need the JWKS URI, and this is going to be, we don't have it now, we are going to retrieve it after now. And that is what is needed for the secret. And we want to continue with other parameters. The audience is more or less like the application that is going to be using this JWT. For now, we don't have it. We are going to create it later. Of course, it's this current application we are working with, but we are going to actually uh, get the get the value the actual value later and we need the algorithm uh, the algorithm in this case there are a number of options we can choose from so let's use the rs256 so there's a change that was made so we are going to have to cast this to get verification key so i'm going to say as get verification key okay so now we have a check JWT, right? So this check JWT, if it proceeds successfully, we are going to return true. So let's complete the function by doing a try block here. And we are going to await the check JWT, which is going to actually take the incoming requests and response, outgoing response as well. If this goes well, if this function returns correctly, uh, then we are going to return true. But if an error occurs, so we are going to do a catch and catch error. If an error occurs, we are going to throw an exception, unauthorized exception, and going to provide the error. Since this enclosing function should be async, since we are doing an await here, so I'm going to allow the containing function to be async. There's a little typo here, let's fix it. Okay, so the next step is really very important. You need to actually go to Alt-0 to create an account. Uh, so let's go ahead to go to the browser. So I'm going to manage. Of course, you can click on the link right there in the step-by-step -step on my website. So manage.alt0.com. So if you already have an account, you can actually log in. Except outside that, you can just create your account. I think I already have an account. <laughs> Not I think, I already have an account. So I'm, go I'm just going to go ahead to log into my account. So that is all you need to do. Exactly up to this point, you are good to go. So you don't have to do anything more. So go back. You don't need to do anything more. We have to just go back and continue from where we start. All right, to interact with Alt-0, we need to run the command to install the CLI. So they provided a CLI for Mac and I also think for Windows as well to interact with the Alt-0 uh, service. So I'm going to use a brew, a brew, brew install alt zero slash alt zero CLI slash alt zero. 
Right, so we're also going to do uh, the installation for the CLI. So I'm going to say MPA, npm install globally all zero deploy CLI. Okay, so we are now going to tell on the all zero service that we have an API we want to protect. So in that case, we are going to create our API. I mean, this is not this application, but the all zero API. So it's a simple command, just all zero and API is create, and it's going to prompt us for the name. And the name, let's call it um, the same name of the application next JS dash tutorial. I think that is fine. So we're also going to use the same name as the identifier. So I'm going to say tutorial. So for the scope, we can just leave it to be an empty string. The token lifetime, let's leave the default value and uh, allow off offline as size, that should be fine. Algorithm is already there. Okay, so we have everything created for us at this point. What I want, to, I want you to take note of is a number of things. Uh, basically, you want to take note of this value here, dev whatever, and this is, is what corresponds to the domain. The audience is actually the identifier or the name of the API you are working with. Okay, having this in mind, we want to move this data, this piece of data we now have into an environment uh, file. So I'm going to create an environment uh, variable in here. So I'm going environment uh, file. So it's going to be .env file. And in the .env file, we are going to specify these two values. We are going to save them in two variables. We already have these values, so it's going to be this. This one is going to be the, the audience and the domain is going to be what we have right here all the way to the .com. So I'm going to just copy it and paste it right here. So we want to now use this as configuration in our application. And so we are going to install one more library that helps us use Next.js config. And that library is called Next js config so that we'll be able to use these variables in our application so i'm going to install the next.js config in the app module we want to add the config module there as well so we have the authorization module here we also want to add the the config module as well so we specify the config module dot for roots Okay, so let's go back to our authorization guide and we want to now use the config service to consume these values we have in our environment variables. I'm going to now save everything. And so the first thing I would like to do is to create these two variables. They are going to be used in the connectivate function. So I'm going to create them right here. So I'm going to say private alt audience alt zero audience. We also need the domain. Okay, so we want to add this as constructor parameters. So I'm going to, I think there may be a way to add it by generating the constructor parameter. Okay, so I think I'll just write it manually. So constructor, and we are injecting these parameters. I'm going to say this does all audience is equal to this dot config service dot get and we are going to retrieve the values from the environment uh, file i'm going to copy and paste this and then adjust it so right now we have the domain and we have the audience so we are going to now update the domain and audience values uh here so the audience is going to be the audience we have it and we missed out the other one. The domain is actually called the issuer, and this is going to be the domain. Then let's also enter the URI, the JWKS URI. Now, the JWK URI is on, of this format, so you use this backticks, and you want to specify the domain, and then you want to append well-known JWKS.json. So let me just type it so that you can see how it goes. This is a requirement by alt zero, so we, we cannot really change it. And specify jwks.json. Okay, so we also want to retrieve the request and the response. Remember, this is request and the response. We don't have it yet, so we have to retrieve it from the 
we have to re retrieve it from the execution context. So let's see. If you look at the can activate, it has an execute. It has execution context. This context contains the request and the response. So let's retrieve those from the context. So I'm going to say zip call to context dot get by index. So the first one should be the request, which is index zero, I think. And the second one is going to be the response. So now you see this problem here, which happens sometimes. I think it might be coming from... So what we have here is uh, can activate is an async function that returns a promise. So it's promise of a boolean, right? So let's just save everything. Okay, so at this point, I think we more or less have completed this uh, application. So the first, the next thing we want to do now is to go to the API and protect it. So what do you do? To do that, you simply use the annotation use guards. And what is going to happen is going, is going to be authorization, authorization guards. So what is going to happen now is when someone tries to access this URL, he's going to require an access token or a JWT, a JWT, uh, a JSON web token. So I'm going to go ahead to save everything and let's restart our server. So I'm going to stop the server and then rerun the server again so let's go try to see what happens so let's go to the public one so this one still works perfectly well so let's go to so for some reason this uh, screen is kind of messing up okay so i'm going to public it works perfectly well as expected so let's go to private Okay, so you can see that now it doesn't work. It requires a credential. Now, if you want to specify the token, normally the token can come from anywhere. But if you are using Alt Zero, it makes it super easy. You can simply go to your applications, go to your APIs. And at your APIs, you can see the one we created now. So you can specify this token. If you click on it and go to test, you can see that create a token and you can see that we have this token. Okay, so since I, I don't have to spend so much time on this, um, so basically what they are saying here is you have to make a request to retrieve, providing the client ID and the client secret, and then you retrieve the token, and then you can use that response to specify um, that token to specify. So this is a sample response, but they specify you have a client ID, you have a client secret, and then when you send this request, you get the token, and then you can use this token to specify as the in the authorization header and be able to have access. So in the next tutorial, we are going to be continuing with Next.js. So this is basics of uh, creating a Next.js application and trying to secure it using Alt Zero. So in the next tutorial, we are going to examine a few more features of Next.js. In subsequent, tutor subsequent tutorials, we are going to be talking about how to save the access token locally and also how to use a refresh token to refresh your access token or your JWT. I'd like to stop here. Please remember to subscribe to my channel. Also, the website where I had this tutorial from, I just have to provide it for you right here this is a step-by-step -step right here so if you have any challenges leave me a comment to, to let me know and also like this video if it has been informative for you we we'll see in the next part